In this video, I'm checking out the new Zheun G200 Lite. It's a small chip on board light that promises to be shockingly powerful, and it has a special trick up its sleeve. So let's check out the features, the build quality, the value for money, and see if it's any good. But first, if you're new around here, I'm Harv. And I have lots of videos about videography and audio gear reviews and tutorials on my channel. So consider subscribing if you haven't already, hit the bell, it means a lot to me and helps the channel grow. I've also timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bit you want, no worries. I feel like I should explain the deal with this. Zheyun got in touch and said, hey, uh, would you like to just check it out on a loan basis, you know, and uh, you can just say what you like, send it back, uh, no strings. And I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll check it out as I've had some good experiences with other Zheyun products recently. So it arrived and it was rather good. So after a few days of using this, I got back to Zheyun and said, can I just buy it? And, you know, after all, because I've, I've got some budget for uh, from my Patreon for exactly this kind of thing. They said, yep. Yeah. They gave me a small discount, which I didn't ask for, but albeit this is a review sample, so, you know, um, and so I did. So in short, I'm giving it away. It's worth around $350, pounds, euros, and uh, it's gonna go to one of my Patreon backers, and if you want to find out more about that, it's linked below. You know, it's a great thing to do. It supports the channel and uh, helps to fund these reviews. So do check it out. And now let me tell you about the features of the G200. The Zheyun Molus G200 is a chip on board, i.e. a single LED source style bicolor light. And looking at the specs, it's all very good news, but there are a few things to unpick. The first thing being the name, being called the G200, I assumed it was a 200 watt light. Because the Molus G60 is 60 watts, the X100 is 100 watts. The G200 in normal mode is actually 200 watts, but the unit maxes out at 320 watts. To be clear, this is definitely not a complaint. I just think that in a way, the name undersells what the G200 is capable of. And on that note, on the ring that surrounds the chip on board, it says LED fill light, and fill light kind of suggests that perhaps Zhiyun don't consider the G200 to be quite key light brightness. And if so, I disagree. I recently reviewed the X100, the G200's baby brother, and the marketing suggests to use it as a key light, but I thought it would be better for fill or hair light duties. The G200 is far brighter than the X100, so I say it can be used for key light duties. And speaking of brightness, the other lights in the Molus range don't really compare to the G200, but we should compare, right? I want to show you now a breakdown of the brightness measurements of the G200 versus the rest of the Molus range and some other lights in this kind of category. And I think you're going to be shocked. I think. So just to say these are lux measurements at a distance of one meter. And I'll start with some really common video lights. We've got the Aperture 300D Mark II measuring in at a healthy 11,000 lux. And then we have my favorite key light and that's the Aperture 600D, which outputs a whopping 22,150 lux. And then for a more budget option, we've got the Amaran 200D, which has a respectable 7,890 lux. And by the way, these three are all daylight lights, so they're at 5,600 Kelvin. And then we have the Molus G60, which I reviewed previously, and that has 2,367 lux, at 6,500 Kelvin. The X100 has a little more at 3,881 lux at 4,500 Kelvin. And then the G200, which at standard running outputs 9,460 lux at 6,500 Kelvin, but at peak brightness outputs 13,800 lux. But all of this gets really interesting when we look at it on a lux per dollar basis. The following prices are at the time of filming and vary, obviously, but the 300D Mark II is $949, which means we're paying nine cents per lux. I hope this makes sense. The 600D is $1,390, which gives us six cents per lux. The Amaran 200D is $299, and that gives us an outstanding four cents 
per lux. The G60 is $199 and that gives us 8 cents per lux. The X100, slightly better, it's $250 and 6 cents per lux. But the G200 at $379 equals the Amaran at four cents per lux. But when you engage the secret weapon of the G200, which is called Max Extreme Mode, it drops to less than three cents per lux. What a bargain. Now, Max Extreme Mode, I'm sure you're wondering what that is. It's where the output is increased from uh, so 200 watt up to 300 watt. And I love the name, by the way, Max Extreme Mode. It sounds like the latest razor on the market or something. It's activated by a long press and hold of the two dials on the controller unit. And well, you've seen what the measurements say, you know, it's gonna be a big increase in light, but I will test this in a bit. The one thing to bear in mind with Max Extreme Mode though, is it is apparently limited by the ambient temperature. If it gets too hot, it will drop back down to normal running mode. The G200 has the Bowens mount, and this is one thing that really separates this model from the rest of the Molus range, which have the incredibly compact proprietary ZY mount for tiny modifiers. Like I said, the G200 is by color and it has a color temperature range between 2700 and 6500 Kelvin which is pretty standard for a bicolor light, but you know, that's useful, a useful range. It also has good color accuracy ratings like you'd expect from this kind of light of 95 plus CRI and 97 plus TLCI. You can control the G200 like the other lights in the Molus range using the ZY Vega app. It's easy to connect because it has Bluetooth. And as you can see here, it also has a music mode and this reacts to transients when playing music, which is cool. This means in theory, you could set these up to film something like a music video, shove them into music mode and you're gonna get some cool results. I also love that with the ZY Vega app, you can point your camera at a source of light and it'll recognize and match the color temperature. Nice feature. However, something you won't find in the G200 is filmmaking presets and effects. Some of the full RGB lights have effects like cop car, place here, TV, rave, that kind of thing. The G200 doesn't have these, plus being bicolor, that would kind of limit it to effects like lightning, um, fireplace, flash photography, that kind of thing. Not stuff that I personally use that often, but I'm curious, the lack of these effects, would this, would that stop you from owning the G200? It's worth knowing that the G200 is a mains power light only. There's no battery options. There's no D-tap or anything like that. It uh, doesn't bother me that much. I quite like uh, just mains power. Uh, I don't use batteries that often because um, it just gives me anxiety. <laughs> but I don't know, does that, does that bother you? One thing I really do like is the power connector. The connector locks when inserted, so pulling on the cable won't disconnect it, but holding the connector and pulling it unlocks it. Pretty clever. I've seen similar connectors on larger lights, but never this small and cute. Next onto build quality and the G200 comes in two parts the light unit and the controller unit, and they're split up for a couple of reasons. One, to keep the actual head uh, light unit lighter in weight, plus it's better for, for cooling to split them up. The G200 was slightly bigger than I expected it to be, but it's still small. I'm sure that's because I've just recently been using Zhiyun's smaller lights, so it's a perspective thing. As for the materials used, there's quite a bit of plastic, and whilst I wouldn't call it rugged by any means, it still feels pretty well built. As for the mount quality, not the bounds mount, the mount that you use to place it on a stand, this I found to be a little clunky, but sturdy enough. As for the fan noise side of things, this initially was a bit of a concern for me because, you know, the G200 is producing quite a bit of power from a rather small unit. And I did notice some fan noise, especially when you start using max extreme mode. It's just getting hot, isn't it? So. But the one thing I noticed is it's not um, whiny sounding like my Aperture 300D Mark I, which you may even be able to hear on my videos, which, you know, I'm looking to replace that because of that noise. So it, this is a real issue for video guys. So overall, I found it an airy sound rather than a whiny sound, which is a good thing. 
do you know what? Let me just show you and we can compare them. All right, here we go. I've got my trusty Tascam Port Capture X8, which is an excellent hand recorder. I'm just going to point it at it. I know this is not particularly scientific, but, um, you know, it's, it'll do. Um, firstly, we've got the, um, the controller unit, which is kind of not too bad, really. Very airy, and then the light itself. And that's, and that's on max extreme mode. And then I've got my fill light, which is uh, the Aperture 300D Mark I. And this noise comes from this unit, which I believe is, yes, this power unit. And this just goes on regardless of the temperature, regardless of the setting. And it sounds like this. Which is pretty annoying, to be honest. It's, it's a much more whiny sound that I find makes its way onto my videos. However, my 600D, which is, you know, on full power, outputting over 22,000 lux, practically nothing. Moving on to the user interface and the user experience of things, and I'll start with the interface. And this is incredibly easy to use. There are just two dials, one for color temperature and one for, you know, the, the brightness. You can fine tune these or click them to cycle between useful increments. The free ZY Vega app is also super simple and a must download. Lights pair easily, and then you can control multiple Zhiyun lights simultaneously. Anyway, now let me show you how the G200 performs versus others. So here's a setup with just one light and I've got my Aperture 600D on full power because I wanted to see what happened when comparing it to max extreme mode. So this is the G200 on normal mode and then switching over to max extreme mode, it looks like this. So predictably, it is quite a step down. Next, I set up the 600D in the normal way I would as my key light at around 25% with all of my other lights set up and it looked like this. This is with a custom white balance in camera and then switching to the G200 and I've matched the power as best as I can and it's a touch more magenta than the 600D. It's remarkably similar and I could definitely use this every day for my key light setup. Note that I had to go up to 70% to match the 600D's 25%. Next on to value for money and alternatives and we'll start with the value side of things and you know, you saw the results, uh, you saw the, the brightness measurements. The G200 is such a bright light for the money. Granted, the other lights on that list, probably, you know, that there are some other effects and, you know, features that, that it has that the G200 doesn't, but even then, it's still sublime value. Of course, if you don't need bicolor, then your options are far more broad. Personally, I am curious to check out the Amran uh, 200D to see what that's like, because that also was, you know, excellent power for the money ratio. And actually, I would also love to see a daylight only version of the G200, just to see what kind of power it could produce if it didn't need, you know, the bicolor thing. Next onto the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Starting with the pros, and this is small. It's gonna be really convenient to work with, easy to position, and you know, it's lightweight, so it's kind on your stands as well. This is undeniably bright, you saw the results, it's great. It's also exceptional value for money. I mean, less than three cents per lux, come on. Gotta love max extreme mode, just for the name alone. Now I kid, it does really increase the brightness. They went with a Bowens mount. This is excellent news. It's the industry standard and unlocks so many different modifiers. The ZY Vega app works brilliantly. It's not quite on par with something like Aperture's Sidus Link, but really nice to have. And then the cons, and this is mains power only. Whilst that's not important to me, I know that will be to many of you. Max extreme mode may be limited by your environment. So yeah, if you live somewhere hot, maybe keep an eye on it. This lacks filmmaking effects, which again, doesn't really bother me, but I know some of you will find these useful. It has some fan noise, albeit not the most unpleasant fan noise. So again, you'll have to decide if this is a deal breaker for you. Finally, to my opinion, and I think Xiaoyun have really nailed it with the G200, it's well designed, it's great value for money, it's easy to use, easy to live with, and it's pretty damn bright. 
This really is my kind of light. It's simple, but powerful. And I really think this is just one of the very best bang for your buck lights out there. I have just a few additional notes. I would say if you are heavily invested in uh, Aperture's Sidus Link system, you know, that may be a reason not to go with this kind of thing. Um, but then again, the ZY Vega app does work well. Do you really need to use Max Extreme Mode? I would say on the whole, probably not for my the applications I'm using them for. Plus, there for me would be just that niggling sensation of, is it too hot in here? Is the unit getting too hot? And is it gonna just switch down to the next, uh, to normal mode and that will throw my exposure off? So I don't know. I think generally for probably 11 months of the year in the country I live in, the UK, uh, I'm probably fine. It's pretty bright though. Overall, I've had a really nice time using the G200 and I'm gonna be a little bit sad to see it go, but go to one of you, it must. I may end up just buying another version of it to replace my fill light, which I've got over here, which is the Aperture 300D Mark I, which I've had forever. It's, um, you know, it, it makes some noise, so that's not great. But if you guys know of a light which is super quiet, very bright and good value for money, please pop it in the comments because firstly, I would like, I would like one to replace my aperture. And you know, this kind of thing, if that, if there were, if there is one like that, I'd also like to review it. So please let me know in the comments. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do you agree? What did I miss? Please let me know in the comments section below and I'm down there as often as I can be. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video on this channel, of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.